Welcome back to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas, and this is another video on Zential. And this one is going to be covering the webmail and also setting up the web, you know, just the web server in general and some digital certificates. We've pretty much gone through a whole plethora of videos going from a scratch install from a CD to DNS DHCP to Samba LDAP, setting up your own domain and changing the administrative port and setting up webmin. Now, in this video, first we're going to go to the certificate authority and we're going to set up a certificate. It's very simple. You're going to put your domain name in my test.local. This obviously is not going to be routable on the internet. This is only for the tutorial. Uh, US city state optional and you can put in the length of the time we'll put in for five years I believe that's 1825 and create and common name we'll do it again we're going to issue this now that's been created my test dot local we'll change that to 25 and DNS colon my test okay actually here we should put the host name in first I believe it's via server one then it would be the domain name, name so DNS colon VM server one my test dot local and we'll issue that and we'll just save it so now we have a five-year digital certificate and I believe it, the digital certificate strength is uh, I believe 2048 we can check that and now we're gonna set up the web server this is pretty simple. We're going to listen on port 80 for your typical websites. Uh, we use this as a web server too if you like, or you can put some obscure port and not port forward your router to it and not utilize that. Uh, we're going to enable SSL and we're going to do it for the public change. So now if I would have tried to do 443 earlier, it would not have worked because the administrative interface was listening in that port and we would have had a conflict. So now that the port is listening at 444, you're good to go. So for all intents and purposes, the web server is running right now. Let's go back to the certificate authority. And let's get all these devices listening on the new certificate we just created. Now, of course, if you want to go out and spend the money on a digital certificate from a certificate authority, like some of the big ones on the internet and have them make it I don't think it's that expensive you can always do that that's great if you're gonna sell a product or a commercial site but if it's just for webmail you know you can just make your own certificate it's the same thing basically it's just not trusted by the browser because you didn't pay whatever company a lot of money to trust your certificate so um, it's much easier and it's less inexpensive and the whole point of using open source and Linux in my opinion is to save a few bucks so I'd recommend just making your own for this tutorial. Okay, now all these services are going to be using that new certificate we just created. How simple is that? And once this is done saving Apache, uh, Apache module, excuse me, we're then going to set up the email and the groupware. This should only be another second. Apache saving quite a bit right now. And now I just realized that I'm actually using an old certificate. So I'm going to have to go to a new web browser because we just changed the certificate we're using. How funny is that? It's a new certificate. And we can view it if you want. 
my test.local. There we go. It's exactly what we were looking for. And get some of the details here. All right. And let's just confirm it. And while that's confirming, I can close this other window out. This should just take a moment to import the certificate. There we go. And I just wanted to check something here. 256, I don't know why I said 2048. I don't know what I was thinking. So 256 bit, yeah. So this is a pretty good certificate, which is kind of becoming the standard on the internet now. Keeps you nice and safe. Okay, now that we got the certificates squared away, tell you what, when you do a lot of these videos like this, they kind of run into one another after a little bit. My screen capture over a little bit. All right, let's go into the uh, email. And general. Now we can set up, if you have a smart host, you can point your mail through a smart host. Usually your most ISPs will have a smart host. That way you can point your email through their servers and it gives it an extra tag on the email trail. Makes it a little more safe and some of the bigger networks like that. Otherwise, they don't like receiving mail from like an individual mail. So if you have like Comcast or Cox, they probably have a smart host out there for you. Um, since we're not set up a smart host here, not for this tutorial, I'm not gonna use Pop. I'm not a big fan of Pop. I like to be able to view my email from multiple devices. I don't like to pull it down into a particular device. And we're not going to engage the IMAP HTTP, you know, the, the certificate we just created. I'm going to save that for the um, groupware. And receive mail from external accounts and manage script sleeves. This is to set up uh, rules for, like, if you don't want to receive mail with certain contacts in it or set up your out of office, things like that. So it's pretty straightforward. Just these three options we're going to choose. And we'll save it. So, for all intents and purposes right now, um, as soon as this figure configuration saves, we have a email server running. Okay, we're winding down. Now we're going to go into our groupware. I can honestly say this is probably my most favorite part. Choose your virtual domain. My test.local, enable spell check, enable active sync. This is great. So when you go to connect your Android, iPhone, tablet device, just choose exchange active sync and follow the wizards and put your server information in and you'll sync right up. And the protocols we're gonna use is IMAPI on a digital certificate and these are for your calendars. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you can get deeper into these. I'm just going to keep it relatively simple. And hit change on each one of these. I mean, you can set your uh, quota on your mailboxes to a certain size. You can warn them when it hits a certain point, And you can actually have the mailbox stop receiving mail when it hits a certain percentage. And these are all things that are personal preference. Okay, it has a really nice spell check, but we have to install part of the spell check. So while this is going on, which should only take about a minute, we have to uh, add to the, uh, what is called the A spell. Otherwise your spell check isn't gonna work. And believe me, I need spell check, as I'm sure, as I've learned, most IT guys do. Okay, while that's doing that, I am going to bring up the terminal. I'm gonna run a simple command the old app get install I believe it's a spell space a spell and in my case I'm going to use English and whatever language you speak you would put the appropriate uh, suffix at the end this just takes a moment does a quick configuration download that's why I have a nice 
English spell check that I could work with. That's pretty much it. Get out of that. All right, we're in business. Let's go back to the uh, dashboard. Uh, we're done. Uh, let's just check it out. I'm going to bring over a web browser and we're going to go to the webmail. Slide this over. So the HTTPS, the local IP address, I believe was 90, and it's going to be web access. Import the certificate. Hey, there's Zafra. We'll log in with Donald, the account I created earlier. I think the default is uh, English. I'll just set it to US English and log on. There we go. And I like to jazz it up a little bit and I think I want to change it to classic. Hey, does that look familiar or what? And let's just send an email. We'll send one to a test. That other user we created. Test at um, my test dot local and we're just one two three one two three and we'll send that off and we'll check to see if they get it a lot of cool features in here don't want to go through too much right now limited on time but you have your out of office uh, the way you want to compose emails calendars you can go ahead and share out your calendar just like you would in Windows, just go in and properties and say permissions and we should see, uh, as you can see, there's test, the other user I created. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You can sync this with your mobile devices and works great with uh, Thunderbird. Let's try test. And there's that email I sent. So it's working good. And I believe this has a, a Cal dev server. So on your um, Thunderbird, when you add your calendar, you can just do add calendar, HTTPS, um, the IP address of the domain name, name, my test. It would be colon 8443 slash Cal dev c a l d a v slash the username that way you can add the calendar and you can add shared out calendars thunderbird and you can use the ldap information which is right here to set up your global address book in thunderbird right here uh with Zabra, there's also a couple other features and this one particular feature i wanted to cover I thought it'd be extremely relevant is um, remote wipe. So once you join your device, whether it be an iPod or um, an Android device or one of the many tablets that are out there and you're receiving your email and your calendars and contacts, and if you're at a corporate level, which is personal, and say you lose it, you lose your device, you know, you left it on the bus, so you left it at the table when you at the restaurant you're eating at, or whatever the case may be. Um, someone steals out of your hotel room, and you got your corporate information on there, or your pictures, or your photos, and you're in that momentary panic state where, you know, someone's got my information. You don't even care about the device. You just don't want the information being taken. Well, Zoffrite does have a free plugin where you can remotely wipe, pretty much take out that device, pretty back to like a factory standard, which is awesome, and it's free. And I'm going to show you how to install that plugin. I've already downloaded. It's a uh, MDM. You can just Google it, Zafra MDM Remote Wipe, and you can download it. That's all I did. And it's very simple. You're just going to, oops, we're not going to open terminal. We're going to open the file browser here. And we're going to go to user, share, and we're going to scroll down to Zafra Web Access. Here we go. And we're going to go to Plugins. And I'm just going to cut it and paste it. And then we're going to go back to Zafra and log in. And okay, I can close this out. And let's bring Zafra over. 
and I just paused the video and I synchronized an iPod touch with the Zafra environment we've been creating here. So let me log in. And now you see their mobile device management is now showing up. In the previous videos it wasn't it was not there. Um, so all you do is just go into it and see iPod. I just synced it up. I will just click on this and request a wipe. I don't want to do that because uh, I don't want to wipe out my iPod, but I think you get the gist of it. So that's pretty neat, huh? I mean, if you're ever in that panic mode, you just run to your computer and, you know, you might have lost your device, but at least this way they're not going to get your information. And I think there's a couple of tutorials out there on YouTube on there are actually show you how to wipe your device using this method. So let me log out. Actually, I never showed you the spell check that I mentioned in the earlier videos. Just a simple spell check, but since we installed the A spell, I guess I can show it here. And just... Ta-da! Since I'm in Zafra, I guess I can actually go through some of the different things here. I mean, you want to share out your mailbox? Here, let's, let's share out the calendar. And we'll share it to test. And you know what? We'll give test full ownership of this. And let's log out. Log in as test. And under test, I shouldn't have any mobile devices. And you see I don't, because I, I joined it under Donald. And let's open that shared fo uh, calendar. And it was under Donald. And it was the calendar. And we'll show all. And there's my calendar. You can do the same thing with the mailbox. You can just go under there and share with the mailbox and do the same thing we just did under permissions. And we can add Donald. And if you want, owner, folk, reader, whatever you want. And let's just log out. And if I want to add test mailbox, just type in the username. And it was the inbox. And there's test inbox and there's that one email. So if you got multiple accounts, it's great. You can just, you know, add those inboxes to your primary account. That way you don't got to constantly log in and log out. So that's pretty much it for Zopra. And there's a lot more things you can do with it. It has a global address book, uh, personal contacts. Using the active think, sync, you can, you know, connect all that to your uh, mobile device, handheld device. Uh, it works great with um, Thunderbird. So I'd just like to say thank you for watching my tutorial videos and visiting the Jonas.net. And I will try to do some more essential videos uh, if time permits. And thank you once again and have a nice day.